Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I'm glad you're here today. We're going to talk today, we, we talked about this last week too, top health tips for the year. Because people come to me literally every day. There's not a day that goes by in my life that somebody isn't reaching out for advice. And it's through the website, drjoe.com. It's through radio shows, through podcasts, patients. Uh, my email, of course, people send questions through our website. We reach out there too. Uh, so we have lots of different ways for folks to reach us. And everybody seems to be wanting information on how to get well and stay well. And it's interesting too, because I was talking uh, to a nurse practitioner who's going to be working with us and uh, other people in the health field. And a lot of people are getting very disillusioned with the healthcare system. And I think you probably know why. Um, because it's, it's overwhelmed. Uh, the insurance companies just aren't paying. Uh, doctors, nurses are just getting uh, kind of kicked around. Uh, you, the patient, are being denied claims, even though the claims are legitimate, uh, because they can. It's pretty much the only reason to do it. So we have to now, as a, as a society, as a person who's leading in the healthcare field, we have to be able to teach you how to take care of yourself. Now, you're going to need chiropractors, you're going to need medical doctors, you're going to need orthopedists, neurologists, neurosurgeons, eye doctors, dentists. Yeah, I understand that. But let's take care of as much as we can for you. So let's jump right in to the top health tips that I want you to consider. Last week we started, so it's on the website, drjoe.com. Uh, if you have a podcast service, it's on Dr. Joe for the health of it. So whatever podcast service you like, Dr. Joe for the health of it. And you can hear last week's show and hear hundreds of other uh, shows as well. It's on YouTube do at Dr. Joe Esposito. And so we're just going to continue on. Every disease known to man has inflammation. Now, inflammation is a hallmark of, like I said, everything, cancer, obesity, heart disease. Inflammation is perfectly normal. And it's a process that occurs when your white blood cells and chemicals protect you from foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses and germs. And so it's a natural process. If I were to come up and punch you in the arm, you'd have inflammation. If you were to scratch your hand, you'd have inflammation. The body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It becomes troublesome when the inflammatory response gets out of hand or it's chronic inflammation. And that's when you keep doing it over and over and over again, causing an inflammation to occur. Uh, we have a patient and he had COVID, uh, tested positive twice, coughing up blood, a very serious situation. Soon as he was able to breathe again, he started vaping again. Now, that's not good, okay? Because vaping is putting trillions of free radicals, these molecules into your lungs that are just attacking your lungs and causing inflammation. So this person was, gosh, coming toward near death, actually, and now they're vaping again. Now, I understand vaping and cigarette smoking and alcoholism is an addiction, but you have to see what, is it worth it? And that's how I live my life. Is it worth it? Is it worth going to this party? Is it worth socializing? It? Asking, is it worth asking this girl out on a date? Is it worth uh, uh, eating this food? And if the answer is yes, then you should probably do it. But the answer is usually not if you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? And so you have to consider these different things. So the food you eat has a direct uh, impact on inflammation in your body. So it's probably the primary role in the chain of events that you need to address. Certain supplements can help, but there are certain things you need to do. Now, if you've listened to me in the past, you know I talk about the seven deadly sins of nutrition, the seven foods you want to cut back or cut out of your life. And those seven foods are alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the seven foods you want to cut back or cut out of your diet. So if you're new to the show, you're just thinking, but Dr. Joe, my whole diet is alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. I cannot survive if I don't eat those seven foods. Well, the answer is you will survive and you'll actually thrive if you do these certain things. But when I talk about nutrition, so much of it is not what you should do. It's what you shouldn't do. And that's what makes it a lot easier. You have to not do things. And I can't make it any easier than not doing something. So one of the things we want to cut back on, it's, it's kind of a subset of the seven deadly sins, are vegetable oils. Now, we talked about this a little bit last week. The anti-inflammatory diet would mean excluding refined vegetable oils. They're clearly one of the most uh, pervasive things in our diet, and they cause a lot of inflammation because they have something in it called omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. And every processed food out there has some type of omega-6 fatty acid in it. 
It might be soy oil, corn oil, canola oil, vegetable, mixed vegetable oils, uh, and even processed oils like uh, olive oil. If you're going to use it, use very little. The more you use, the more inflammation you're going to have. Now, you can get oils from Whole Foods, not from the store. Well, you get it there too. But avocados, nuts, these are things that have natural oils in them. Seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, those are okay, eating the whole seed. But when you process it, you take out a lot of the nutrients. It's usually filtered. And many times the oils go rancid. And the war one of the worst things you can put in your body is rancid oils. So if you're ever going to eat something, even a bag of nuts, and they don't, don't taste right, they taste acidy or funny, throw them away. They've gone rancid. Do not eat rancid oils. They are so toxic to the body. And that's why I'm not a big fan of fish oil, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, because many times fish oil, commercial fish oils that you buy for omega-3 fatty acids are rancid. And I'll explain that in just a second. So cutting out the processed foods, cutting out the processed oils, and that's fried foods as well. Good idea. You want to eat more what? Fruits and vegetables. Vegetables are really a key to anti-inflammatory lifestyles. Opt out. Uh, if you can, opt in. I'm sorry, for organically grown vegetables. If you can. If you can't, it's still better to eat vegetables than it is to eat alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, even if they're frozen, even if they're canned. Still a better choice than eating bad foods. Try to eat them raw if you can, or try to eat something raw at every meal. For example, this morning when I woke up for breakfast, I had salad. And I had cucumbers, and I had a romaine lettuce in it, organic, of course. I had a tahini salad dressing on it. So there's good oils right there from the whole sesame seed. Now, if I use just sesame oil, a little bit probably isn't so bad, but I wouldn't eat a lot of those processed oils. I want you to really cut those out. If you struggle with any type of concern about your immune system, or especially if you have an autoimmune disease, Graves' disease, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, so Sjogren's, these are autoimmune diseases. The body is attacking itself. So the two foods, well, not just for autoimmune people, everybody should consider cutting back or cutting out of their diet would be uh, bad foods that are processed, cooked foods, especially wheat and dairy. So if you're going to eat wheat and dairy products, I want you to limit them. Now, here's what happens, and this is how we do this. It's really simple. What you do is you cut out wheat and dairy, all wheat and all dairy, not a bite, not a, not a nibble, nothing. No wheat, no dairy. I want you to cut it out two weeks, just two weeks. That's all I want you to do. At the end of two weeks, I want you to start introducing wheat and dairy right away. Have pizza, have a calzone, something that's going to have a lot of wheat and a lot of dairy in it. And notice how you feel. Chances are very strong that you're going to feel tired. You might be gassy. You might be uh, sinusy, uh, bloated, uh, 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 drippy nose, cough. All these things happen when you reintroduce wheat and dairy. Now, some people say, well, I don't have those problems. All right. I'm not going to argue with you. But wheat and dairy cause an inflammatory reaction inside the body. If you have absolutely no symptoms and you're honest with yourself, sometimes people lie. I'm fine. <laughs> Dr. Joe, <clears throat> I feel fine. Okay, well, I'm, that's, that's fine. I'm not, I, don't, I don't argue with people. I just give you information. But wheat and dairy will give you even subclinical inflammation, which means you're not going to feel it, but it's going on. But trust me, it's going on. So cut out the wheat and the dairy, especially um, if you're concerned about your immune system or if you have an autoimmune disease. And that's something that should just go across the board. I wish, I wish doctors would teach this. But here's the thing. Most healthcare providers, like major, major majority healthcare providers, are not trained in diet and nutrition. They have no idea. They call me. Hey, Dr. Joe, I got this patient in my office right now. They got this and this and this. What do you suggest? What supplements? What foods? What should they eat? What shouldn't they eat? I get those calls all the time, not just from patients, doctors. So because they're not trained in it, they turn to people who are experts like myself. Now, I'm not trained to do surgery. I'm not trained to do gynecological exams or prostate exams. So I refer to my doctor colleagues who are experts in that field. They refer to me because we're, my team of doctors are experts in this field. So to combat inflammation, just cutting out wheat and dairy would be spectacular, and eating more fruits and vegetables would be great. A great supplement that I think everybody should be taking is something called turmeric. Now, turmeric, uh, you can get it in capsule form. It's on our website, drjoe.com. It's one of our very popular supplements. Uh, I grow it in my backyard. It grows beautifully, beautiful flowers. And if you have a long-term plan, it grows underneath. Rhizomes grow underneath the ground, and then they pop up other leaves and other flowers. And really, it's a nice ground cover. And in the winter, you cut it down, and it grows back again. 
Uh, but there's so much research, hundreds of studies out there on one of the active components in turmeric called curcumin. Now, I recommend you take whole turmeric and not curcumin because it seems to work better. But there's studies that show it can help reverse memory loss and late stage Alzheimer's in just three months. Now, again, not going to cure everything, but these are what the studies are showing. Reduce arthritis pain by 60%, joint swelling by 73%, eliminate symptoms of hard to treat depression. It can help halt the onset of type 2 diabetes, the onset once it's coming on in pre-diabetes. Uh, prevents DNA damage that can lead to things like abnormal cell growth and cancers. Now, it works on two ways. Number one, and these are the two things that really cause you to age. And I, I had a, a young lady call the show last week, and she wanted to know how to avoid wrinkles. She was in her 40s. How do you avoid wrinkles? And you avoid wrinkles by a, a basically staying away from the foods we talked about because they're high in free radicals. And free radicals are molecules that eat away at your connective tissue and can cause cell damage. But the two things we want to take care of in every cell in the body is our mitochondria. That's the powerhouse found in each cell. It's the one that creates energy. And there's something in each cell called a telomere. Now, a telomere, if you look at a cell, looks like a tail on the end of the cell. And the longer and more active the tail is, the younger the cell is, biologically, not chronologically. So the younger the cell is. As we get older, the telomeres get weaker and weaker. And eventually, if you have the right research, you can actually start to predict when somebody's going to come to the end of their life because the telomeres just kind of stop doing their thing. They stop getting long, they shrink, they get weak, and then the person can, can expire. The nice news is that you can reverse a lot of this damage, not 100%, but things like turmeric, resveratrol, great. Now, people say resveratrol, Dr. Joe, resveratrol is great, and it's found in wine. There was one report, I think it was on 60 Minutes years ago, that said, you know, because the French have a bad diet, well, relatively bad, they eat meats and dairy products, and they have long lives. Why is that? And it's called the French paradox. And one of the reasoning came about is that the wine had resveratrol in it, and the wine is what was saving, uh, keeping them young. And so immediately people said, well, wine is good for you. Well, no. A equal B equals C, not necessarily A equal C, if you follow that math. So resveratrol is good for you, and it can actually help keep those telomeres healthy. So can turmeric. However, you'd have to drink about a case of wine a day, every day to get even a minuscule amount of resveratrol that might have a medicinal benefit to you. So the whole thing with wine and resveratrol it didn't, didn't pan out, okay? And that was not the reason for the French paradox. So turmeric is great. Uh, you can take it if you take it with something fatty because it, it's, it's uh, 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 lipophilic. That means it loves fat. It hooks onto fat. So if you eat it with something fatty, and nuts, avocados, something along those lines, it's a little better. And also if you cook with it and heat it, that's good too. So if you like Thai food, maybe a nice uh, curry, you know, a red curry or a yellow curry that has a lot of turmeric in it and a little coconut oil, that's a good way to do it. Now, if you just take the supplements on an empty stomach, they're still amazing. But if you heat, it just makes it a little better. And that's what this show is all about, teaching you things that you can do to become healthier, better. We talked about omega-3 fatty acids. Absolutely, positively, folks. It's an essential fatty acid. That means you have to get it in your diet. You can't make it yourself. And you've heard about fish oil, of course, being a source of omega-3s. It is. However, many times the fish oil is contaminated with heavy metals like mercury. Some f good companies, and there's some good companies out there, will uh, filter out the mercury. But my thought is, why would you have to take something to filter it out to make it edible? Doesn't make any sense. And the fish oil is not in what's called a phospholipid form. Phospholipid form is the absorbable form. So you can get phospholipid omega-3s from something called krill oil. It's better for you. It's in a better form. It's better for the environment. It doesn't kill the fish. The krill is tons and literally megatons of krill out there. And it's a good choice, but the krill don't produce omega-3 fatty acids. Krill get it from eating algae. So algae is the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids. That's the supplement I take every day. I take, excuse me, Dr. Joe's algae oil, Dr. Joe's omega-3 algae oil. Uh, and it's, I take two a day. You know, the bottle says probably take one. You could take two a day. I take a gram a day, which is two, a um, thousand uh, milligrams. And I can't imagine not taking it because it's essential for the brain and it's great for inflammation. Now you do want to cook with herbs if you can and spices because the herbs and the spices ounce for ounce are probably some of the healthiest foods in the world. So you might want to consider clove, cinnamon, a pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spices, oregano, 
uh, sage, thyme, Italian spice mix, basil. Uh, these things are amazing. Now, you can grow basil, of course. You can grow oregano. It grows very easily. It's like a weed. So add more spices to your diet. And I know just the other day I was at a store and I had this amazing sale on organic. Was it turmeric, ginger, and something else? I forget which one it was. And I've just been added to everything I eat. I put it on salads. I put it in soups. And it's nice. It changes a little flavor. It's kind of fun. So adding more spices is really good. And here's a little t- tip for you. And um, people laugh at this, th- those, those people who know me, is I carry a bag of cloves in all my suit jackets. And the reason is when you're talking, and you know if you're wearing a mask, it's not as big a deal, but when you're talking close to somebody, what's one of the worst things that could happen? Stinky breath, right? So cloves are great because they give you fresh breath. So I take the clove, I break the little bud off because the bud will just dissolve in your mouth. And it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. And I take the clove and I suck on it. Now, if I'm talking to somebody, I shove it up between my cheek and gum and I'll talk, pull it back down, suck on it again, put it back in my cheek and gum. Eventually, it's going to start to break down and dissolve. Chew it and swallow it. More antioxidants than blueberries. Really good for you. Great for your gums too and teeth health. And it's a nice natural way to get fresh breath because if you're using things with artificial sweetener and like mints or something like that, that's not good because the artificial sweetener is dangerous. So cloves are good for you. They're cheap. Uh, I just buy a couple at a time. I buy them in bulk. I think I get them at uh, Sprouts has them in bulk. And I just buy just a few, maybe 20 or 30 at a time because they will eventually, you know, lose their flavor. So I use them if I need to. I can throw them away and get new ones. It'll cost you probably five cents for like 20 or 30 cloves. It's really cheap and amazing how well they work, and they have medicinal benefits as well. So they're good for you, help with inflammation, help your gums, and they give you that fresh breath. And people go, what's that smell? Because most people associate cloves with what? Christmas. And Christmas is hopefully, for most of us, a happy time. And so it actually gives you a psychological benefit when you're talking to someone because they think of something happy when they talk to you. And so, oh, I like Joe. He's very nice. He's... And they don't know why, because you smell like Christmas. Other things that we can do to keep ourselves healthy. We have to keep our nervous system functioning the best we possibly can. This, I believe, is the missing link in healthcare. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches, these are signs of pinched nerves. Now, when you pinch a nerve, it hurts, but 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So, for example, there's a nerve that controls your blood pressure. Well, you don't feel your blood pressure. You don't feel your spleen, your kidneys, your thyroid, your ovaries, your testicles, your uh, gallbladder, all controlled by nerves. So my concern, my doctors and I, our concern is not only the nerves that feel pain, it's the 90% of the nerves that don't. Because if we take you on as a patient, I don't want to get you out of pain. I want to get you well. So we don't just deal with pain. We deal with the other 90% of the body as well, which makes us a true wellness center. We don't just treat a thing, we treat the whole body. So it's a good idea, all my doctors do this, they check the nerves that feel pain and the nerves that don't feel pain. So we check the nerves that feel pain, nerves that don't feel pain, and then if the bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they wear out. And if the bones wear out, that's called arthritis. So it's really important as we take care of our chemical health, we take care of our physical health. So if you'd like to make an appointment, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. We would love to be your doctors. So you can go to our website, drjoe.com, and make an appointment. And we're happy to uh, see you. Normally, the first visit is $720. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, going over the x-rays, a complete nutrition evaluation. Very, very in-depth, those first really two visits. We've reduced that to uh, $375. We accept almost all insurances. We accept Medicare. We accept uh, patients from the VA. If the VA refers you to us, they pay for your treatment. We are love to take on our VA patients. We love to help our military folks, former militaries. And if you're ever in a car accident, please come see us right away. If the car was damaged, you were damaged. I've never seen it any other way. So please come see us as quickly as you possibly can if there's a car accident. But any health problem, the quicker we can get to you, the better off it's going to be. So you can make an appointment, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We would love the opportunity to be your doctors. If you have any questions, you could send a question through the website as well, drjoe.com. Also, the supplements we talked about. We talked about turmeric. We talked about omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, Minimum supplements you should be taking are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's like the starter kit. And those are relatively inexpensive. They're two powders. I mix them together. They taste great. 
coconut milk, almond milk, water, smoothie, just mix it up and take it. All on the website, drjoe.com, or come to our offices and pick them up. Save you some shipping costs. Other things I want you to consider getting yourself healthy for the new year. You really should filter the water in your house. <clears throat> the U.S. has so many water quality concerns. It doesn't matter where you live anymore. It's dangerous because these chemicals can get into the body. So let's assume I'm taking high blood pressure medication, cholesterol, birth control pills. I don't take birth control pills or any of the others. The filter can filter out when we, we flush out toilets, viruses, germs, bacteria, waste products, but they don't filter out medicines. So many times those medicines in very small amounts can end up in the water. Now, again, it's probably not that big a deal, but long-term it might be. Plus, there's chlorine and fluorine and other chemicals that may be found in the water. I believe that everybody should have a whole house water filter. So filtering your drinking water is good, but you want to filter the water that you bathe in too. Because when you take a hot shower or bath, your pores open up and you can absorb things right into your body. Your body's a sponge. It absorbs anything that comes in contact with it. That's why if you put Epsom salts, let's say, in your bathtub, you can absorb the magnesium. Well, if there's toxic chemicals, you can absorb those toxic chemicals as well. So chemicals absorbed through your skin get into the blood system. They bypass the digestive system and the internal filtration systems. So they can even be worse than if you're just uh, drinking it because you have the digestive system and other filters there. And you, it can be affecting every aspect of your health and you don't even realize it. So I recommend a whole house water filter. Ideally, the filter, you, you want to filter it as it enters into the house. So every drop gets processed. So that means filtering water that goes into your kitchen, your shower, your toilets. Uh, even in your toilet, if water is sitting in the toilet, if there's chlorine in the water, those chlorine gases are being released into the air. Again, no big deal, small amounts. These are extra steps. This is why we, we want to get you more than just the average person. We want to get you beyond average. We want to get you healthy. And the average person certainly isn't healthy. So I use a company called PureLifeWaterGA.com, PureLifeWaterGA.com. Uh, on our website, if you go to clinics, they have a link under the clinic tab uh, to their web website. Uh, tell them I sent you. It's a couple of thousand dollars for a whole house water filter, but believe me, it is worth it. I've had countless people tell me, my gosh, it's amazing. This stuff is great. Your water tastes great. Why does your water taste so good? It doesn't taste good. It tastes like nothing. And people aren't used to that. And we've all been to restaurants where it tastes like chlorine. It tastes, it's so horrible. I don't want you to do that. So it's really important you do that. Soaps, I use Castile soap to wash my body with, to have it at my sinks out throughout my body, throughout my uh, house. So Castile soap is going to be the ideal scenario as liquid soap is one I use, but any of the natural soaps, you don't want something that has a lot of chemicals and fragrances. I know when I was a kid, uh, uh, deodorant soap would make my eyes swell up. Took me forever to figure that out. But if I wash my hands with deodorant soap or scented soap and I touch my eyes, my eyes swelled up like somebody just socked me. So even soaps, uh, perfumes, hairsprays, uh, conditioners, uh, body lotions, please only use all natural organic products because your skin is just sucking this stuff up and it doesn't get filtered like it does through your body. I'm almost out of time for this segment. Uh, if you have any questions, go to my website, drjoe.com. Send me the questions. I'm happy to answer them for you. If you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. You can book right online. You can call us. We're happy to answer any questions you have. We want to be your doctors. We have one goal, and that's to naturally get you well and keep you well. We work with a referral network of other doctors as well. So if you need a gynecologist or a dentist or an eye doctor, we have doctors we can refer you to. Our goal is to do everything we can for you and your family. And we accept most insurances. So there's no reason why right now you should not be booking an appointment, drjoe.com. Uh, follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito, very important. And Dr. Joe, for the health of it, on your podcast service. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Glad you're with us. We're talking today about the top health tips that you can put into your life to start out the new year. Things, and it doesn't have to be the new year, of course. You can do it any time of the year. But things that you can do to get well and stay well, things that you have control over. And I was just watching the news, and they were talking about this new, is it G5 that's coming out, these new phones that are going to be so much faster, and they're going to be amazing, and it's going to be awesome. Well, there's a problem. The G5, a lot of uh, airlines are concerned now, is going to interfere with some of their, was it landing gear, I think it was, and their landing information. 
And so the airlines are begging the, these people not to launch the G5 or at least limit it around airports. And the phone companies are like, nah, eh, we've done it in other countries. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's an issue. But the bigger issue is that it's creating something called electromagnetic fields. And your body is surrounded by electromagnetic fields every day, indoors, outdoors, everywhere you go. Common sources include cell phones, cell towers, computers, smart meters, Wi-Fi. That's just a few. And you really want to try to reduce your exposure to electromagnetic fields. Because when it first came out, ah, it's a bunch of hoodoo, airy-fairy stuff. It's a bunch of crud. Nobody, it's not going to do anything. Well, if you've ever been to my live lectures many times, and I haven't done one in a while, but I probably should start doing them again. Um, one of the demonstrations I'll do is I'll have somebody come up on the stage and I'll push on their arm and they'll be strong. Then I'll have them take their cell phone and hold it against their chest. And I'll push again and they're every, every time, 100%, no matter how big the person is, their muscles go weak. The electromagnetic frequencies are affecting the flow of electricity through our bodies. And we're surrounded by them all day, every day. You have Wi-Fi in your house. You have your cell phone next to your heart, in your shirt pocket. Women put it in their bra sometimes. So dangerous. So a couple of things I'd like for you to consider. Number one, hardwire your computers instead of just working on Wi-Fi because that's putting Wi-Fi all around your house, your keyboards, your, your, your trackballs, your mice, your printers, your uh, house phones. This stuff is everywhere. And it, if we jump up to 5G, which it looks like it's going to happen, I believe it's going to get substantially worse. If you have to use Wi-Fi, shut it off at night. I have a timer on my Wi-Fi, and it's an old Christmas tree light timer that I bought at Walmart, I think it was. And I just set it around 10 o'clock or so, it shuts off. And around 5 o'clock in the morning, it comes back on again. I have cable television. One of the reasons I have cable television is I can hardwire it. And I don't have to send electromagnetic frequencies everywhere carrying all this information. If you're very sick, I recommend you even shut off the electricity in your bedroom. Now, that's a big step. I know most people aren't going to do that. But even electricity flowing through the walls can be an issue. I've had patients already, Doc, I got these headaches. I'm getting chiropractic care. And I'm plant-based. I'm taking supplements. And I'll say, move your bed. Move the head of your bed to another wall somewhere. And I've had a few patients over the years actually see results with that. And I'm guessing because the wires were right where the head was and they just moved it to another side. If you have an alarm clock, um, try to do a uh, battery-powered alarm clock if you can, not one that's Wi-Fi. Uh, if you have your cell phone in your bedroom, I want you to put it far away from you. Do not put it next to your bed because those electromagnetic frequencies are just eating away at your brain. The big issue I see a lot with teenagers, I guess with everyone, is they'll play on their phone until they fall asleep and have their phone right under their head. I, I, I'm frightened. This is a Moody Blues song. It's called I'm Frightened. And the line in the song is I'm frightened for your children. And I am frightened for our children. Because they didn't have, we, they didn't have stero we didn't have steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, genetically modified food, electromagnetic frequencies. These kids are just surrounded by this stuff. So I'm frightened for you, but I'm really fighting for, frightened for the little brains that are growing. I do recommend you get rid of your microwave. If you have a microwave, the only time I want you to use it is two things. Number one, put your sponge in it at the end of the day. Set it for about a minute or two, walk away. It will cook the viruses, germs, bacteria, and sanitize your sponge. You can also use it if you need to heat up something like a towel, not food, like a towel. If uh, people need a hot towel, you can dip a towel in some warm water, squeeze it out, put it in a microwave, heat it up, lay it across your abdomen. It kicks in what's called your parasympathetic nervous system, helps you relax. I'd rather you throw the microwave out altogether, but I'm also a realist. Only use it for those two things. Uh, steam convection oven is going to be the best. Uh, uh, any type of convection oven is going to be fine. I'd rather see you do that than have a microwave. I really am not a fan of microwaves in any way, shape, or form. Uh, these smart houses and smart thermostats, um, I used to date a gal and her whole house was smart wired. And I just always thought about it in the back of my head. Oh, let me lower the heat. Let me turn up the sound. Let me turn off the lights. Let me open a garage door. Uh, it worries me. Again, is it going to kill you right away? No, but these are the, this, this is black belt level that I'm teaching you about health now. Avoid using wireless baby monitors because that electromagnetic frequency is gonna be around the baby and their skulls are really thin and the electromagnetic frequency can get into their skulls. 
If you have to carry your cell phone, please don't put it near your heart. Gentlemen, don't put it in your shirt pocket, your vest pocket. Ladies, don't stuff it in your bra. I try to carry my phone with me whenever I can. And I want to keep it as far away from my body as I can. When I get to my car, I put it on the seat next to me. I put it on the, on the, on the dashboard. I have a little magnetic uh, thing for my uh, phone. So at, at, at work, I put my phone far away from me on the desk. So I try to avoid my cell phone as much as possible. Certainly distance yourself. The further you get, the better off you're going to be. And when I'm on my phone, I usually am on speaker or I have a wired headset. Wired, wired un, you know, uh, hands-free wet headsets I'm not a big fan of because you're sending those electromagnetic frequencies directly into your brain. So a wired headset doesn't do that. Put it on speaker if you have to talk. Very, very seldom. I can't remember the last time I put my phone next to my ear. In fact, if you read the directions in most cell phones, which you've never done, that little thing they give you, that little packet of information, it says, do not put next to your head. Hold at least an inch or two away from your head. It says it. I don't know if the new ones do, but I know the old ones used to. It says, don't put it next to your head. Oh my gosh, it's a cell phone. And then you have babies put it next to their head and children. It just, it, it kills me. It really does. Now, what you can do about that is make sure you're getting enough magnesium. Magnesium as a natural uh, calcium channel blocker. Magnesium can help reduce the effects of uh, electromagnetic frequency of what's called the voltage-gated calcium channels. That's how calcium gets in and out of the cells. Uh, most people are deficient in magnesium. So taking things like Dr. Joe's Essential Source, uh, eating fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, you should get enough magnesium. Uh, if you cramp a lot, if you have digestive issues, you might even want to consider uh, taking a hot bath in filtered water with milk of magnesia. Not milk of magnesia, I'm sorry, Epsom salts. Milk of magnesia is magnesium. Um, but Epsom salts, you can actually absorb it through the body. You absorb it through your skin. That's why if you're sore, you're achy, they'll say take a bath in Epsom salts, the magnesium can be absorbed into your skin and relax the muscles. And that's why I do recommend a whole house water filter uh, for showers and baths and drinking and eating and toilet water and everything. Uh, again, I use a company called purelifewaterga.com. Uh, it's on our website. If you click on the cl clinic link, it drops you down and has a link to their website. Uh, that's the water filter I use in my house. And it filters every drop of water and it, it seems to work really well. So, And we talked earlier about using spices, but things like cinnamon, cloves, ginger, rosemary, turmeric can help the body deal with the effects of electromagnetic frequencies. So once again, what does it come back to? It comes back to eating a good plant-based diet, fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, avoiding alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. And if you're not going to avoid it totally, at least feel guilty when you eat it. I'll throw a little Jewish guilt on you. I'm not Jewish, but I'll throw a little Jewish guilt on you. Be guilty when you eat it and you'll eat less. And so that's something that I do too. And I, I want you to think this, is it worth it? I talk about this a lot in my, my lectures, my shows. Is it worth it? Is eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener absolutely worth it? When the long-term effects on your health, you know what they are. The cost is outrageous. The environmental cost, the financial cost, uh, the, the work that it goes into making a steak as, compo as compared to growing uh, some green beans. And here's the thing. Most people eat about six foods uh, over and over again. If I had anyone write down everything they eat, you'd see a pattern develop. Maybe for breakfast, they have a, a donut, and maybe for lunch, they have a hamburger, or maybe for dinner, they have chicken. And you'd see a pattern of about six, maybe 10 things over and over and over again. All you have to do to get healthy is change those, let's say, 10 things to 10 healthy things. It's just that easy. And when you switch them out, this becomes the new norm, and it's a lot healthier for you. Now, as a team of wellness doctors, my team of doctors, we, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. All my doctors have one goal, and that's to naturally get you well and keep you well. Now, I don't surround myself with only people that eat plant-based diets. If I did, I'd have no friends. I think I have two friends that are plant-based, actually. Uh, one of them just went back to cheating, so she said. So I don't judge, but I just want you to make better choices. What could be a better choice? Could I have, I'm at the Chinese restaurant. Should I get the, uh, I don't know, General Tso's chicken or should I get the eggplant? We'll get the eggplant. Something as simple as that and little choices like that go a long way. So just start thinking about what can be a better choice in your diet. You don't have to do everything at once. Just consider these things. 
I have patients come to me all the time, pretty much every day with sleep issues. How many people have sleep issues? Raise your hand. I do sometimes. I think we all do. One of the most radical and recent discoveries revealing the importance of sleep for health is that each and every organ has its own biological clock. And I was talking to this, a physical therapist friend of mine, and we were talking about it. And if you, there's a biological clock on when the organs kick in. And usually it was a two to, was it one to three or something like that in the morning is when the liver kicks in. And so this master clock synchronizes with your body functions. And if somebody wakes up every night between one and three, many times it's a liver issue. And we get them on some good liver supplements like super green, central source, glutathione. We get them off the meat, the dairy, the sugar, the coffees. And the liver starts to heal. They start to sleep through the night. It's really cool. So it's kind of neat. So when you upset that, it's called a circadian rhythm, not just by getting enough sleep, but other far-reaching results can occur aside from just fatigue. Mood, creativity, brain detoxification, DNA expression, chronic disease risks, including dementia, longevity. Sleep is really important. And I know uh, being in the media, there's usually somebody at the station at weird hours. I've done weird hours already. I've worked the midnight shift and I've, uh, even in, in high school, I worked, I remember one week I had five jobs and one of my jobs on a weekend was I was a security guard. And I would sit at this, I didn't even know what it was, some type of plant in Moonaki, New Jersey. And I'd sit there and I brought this big black and white TV with me and I brought up my lunch with me in a, in a thermos and in a, in a, in a little uh, backpack. And I'd just sit there. And as long as they had a security guard on staff, their insurance premiums were way low. Nothing ever happened. I, there was a little bunny rabbit outside. I talked to the bunny rabbit on weekends, and that was about the excitement of my life. But that really messed with my sleep patterns. It was not the best thing because I couldn't sleep during the day because then I had school and I had other work I had to do too. And so that was not a good idea for me. Now, if you are going to work the night shift, always work the night shift. But the challenge is that we have to Shift on weekends then if we're working night shift. I used to uh, date a gal who was an anchor at CNN and she'd go, she'd wake up at two in the morning and come home at 10 o'clock in the morning. That was her like schedule. Well, I'd just, you know, leave him for work. And so if we had dates, it was on the weekends and she was trying to stay awake and I felt bad that she couldn't stay. I was trying to make her stay awake and she wanted to and not the healthiest situation. So optimizing your sleep is going to be key. So make sure you sleep in total darkness as close to possible. That will uh, help your body produce melatonin, which helps you sleep. And your body then says it's time to go to sleep. If it's light, the body has a tough time going into that deep REM or REM sleep. So blackout curtains. I have blackout shades in my, in my house. Uh, you can get a mask to make it dark. You can get a $5 mask at a drugstore and make it dark. But darkness is one of the keys for your brain to say, okay, it's time to go to sleep. Keep the temperature no higher than 70 degrees. 68 to 70 degrees is ideal for sleeping. Try to get those electromagnetic frequency things out of your bedroom, like your phone, your uh, Wi-Fi. That can help too. Keep your electronic devices at least three feet from your bed. I prefer six, 10 feet if you can. Further off, the better. Sleep pillows are really important. You got to have to try different pillows to see what work. We have special pillows here at the office that we recommend for our patients. And they seem to help tremendously because they help put the curve back into the neck. Separate bedrooms. I know this sounds strange, but years ago, right around 2007, 2008, I was helping uh, building, uh, building houses. And the trend at the time, right before the crash of 2008, was two master bedrooms, a his and a hers master bedroom. Now, I know that sounds maybe less romantic and less sweet and wonderful because you want to be next to your honey if you can. But if somebody sleeps, if somebody snores, if somebody's a light sleeper, uh, it becomes an issue. And so you can go visit each other, but sleeping in a separate bedroom is not that terrible an idea for health reasons. For social reasons, you can decide what you want to do from there. But I'm just talking about health today. Another reason people don't sleep is because of pain. Restless leg syndrome, headaches, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain. Uh, I have a traumatic brain injury I got when I was a kid. Playing, I got hit by a car. And every now and then it flares up into a headache. And I know if my headache kicks in, I'm awake. It's not much I can do. So what I do is I have to get out of bed. I have this real comfortable chair in my keeping room. And I'll, I'll go into the chair and I'll sit up. And I, then I'll be able to go back to sleep again. But laying in bed, if you're in pain, is not going to be helpful for you. And I have countless people come see us that say, Doc, I have to sleep in a chair. I have to sleep on a couch. Uh, I can't walk up the stairs because I'm in so much pain. So my team of doctors is really good 
at pain management. In fact, I'm the only chiropractor in the whole state of Georgia that's board certified in pain management and orthopedics and chiropractic and double board certified in nutrition and certified in traumatic brain injury. That's my credentials. So I'm pretty well lettered. And that helps me because every time I get a new degree, a new certification, I can add more information uh, to our protocols and our treatment plans. And I teach all my doctors that work with us my techniques and my protocol. So my doctors are really good at what they do. I'm very proud of every one of them. So if you have neck pain, back pain, headaches, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, restless leg syndrome, come see us. We would love the opportunity to be your doctor. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Uh, we can usually get you an appointment the same day or the next day. We could usually work you into the schedule. We accept almost all insurances out there. If we don't accept your insurance, we try to match your benefits as close as possible. So we try to make it out of pocket as, as most comfortable as possible. If you're ever in a car accident, please, I'm on my knees begging you, come see us immediately. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to fix the damage, and the insurance companies are going to jerk you around. I've never seen them not do it. You know what, Joe? You didn't go to the doctor right away, so we're going to deny your claim. Well, I couldn't go to the doctor. My car was totaled because your insured smacked into me drunk in the rear while I was on line at church. Doesn't matter. You didn't go to the doctor. We're going to deny your claim. Then you have to fight them. And they love when you fight them because many times a lot of folks just give up. I surrender. I quit. They get to keep the money. So their game is to make it as difficult as possible for you under the guise of, well, we're just following protocols. But I remember years ago, I worked for one of the major insurance companies. I was doing claim reviews. And these, doc these claim reviewers just hated all doctors, chiropractors, orthos, neuros. They hated them all. They were all scammers and everybody was making up bills and they were liars. And then I remember one of them got in a car accident and they came to see me. And after about three or four visits, they said, oh my God, you were right. This really is serious. And it wasn't that big an accident either, but they were hurt pretty bad. And then another one got in an accident and then another one got in an accident. They all came to see me and then suddenly their, their tone changed. These people aren't lying. They're in an, now, some doctors lie and some patients lie. I'm not saying they don't, but they were saying, oh my gosh, you really can get hurt pretty bad in these accidents. And so made it better for a while. And that was years ago. So you want to come see us. The quicker you, have, the quicker you come see us, the easier it is to fix your problems. DrJoe.com, we'd love to be your doctor. The initial visit was 700, is usually 720. We've reduced that to 375. Exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, complete nutrition evaluation. We spend hours with the patient and working on the paperwork on our patients for that first visit and half of the second visit. It's the best deal out there in healthcare as far as I'm concerned. So drjoe.com, don't wait any longer. Stop suffering. Make your appointment right now. We take Medicare, uh, uh, VA. If the VA refers you to us, the VA even covers your bills. So you can ask your VA doctor, hey, send me to Dr. Joe. He's very good at pain management. They don't want pain patients. Pain patients are a pain to them. They are happy to give away their pain patients. Most primary care doctors are like that too. I'm happy to surrender my pain patients to you. So drjoe.com, you can book the appointment right now. Uh, protect your eye health is another thing I want you to consider. Uh, years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, uh, macular degeneration. Doctor took a picture of my eye, um, maybe six, eight years ago, whatever it was, maybe longer. And the doctor said, you have macular degeneration. It's either going to stay the same or get worse. There's not much you can do. So I really hunkered down and really started putting all my research I'd put together in nutrition. And I started taking super greens, essential source, uh, omega-3 fatty acids, nitric oxide, Dr. Joe's enzyme support. And two years later, I went back and they took a picture of my eyes and it improved. Every two years, my eyes are improving from my macular degeneration. So instead of getting worse, I'm getting better, which by the way, according to the eye doctors, is impossible. It can't happen. But if you go to our website, drjoe.com, type in macular degeneration, pictures of my eyes are on the website, and you can see the progression of how it's getting better over the years, and it continues to improve. So eye health is really important. A couple of things you want to do. You want to remove something called trans fats from your diet. Those are those omega-6 fatty acids, those processed fats. Get them out of your diet. They can have an adverse effect on everything, including your vision. Getting high fructose corn syrup out of your diet. High blood pressure can damage those little blood cells in your retina, obstructing blood flow. So key strategy to normalizing blood sugar, uh, bl uh, blood pressure, go to our website, drjoe.com, type in the words high blood pressure. It's probably the most popular show we've ever done. And you could listen to all the things we do uh, to help patients with high blood pressure, chiropractic care, fixing their digestive system because the nerves that control the digestive system also control the heart, dietary changes, 
uh, supplements like nitric oxide to open up the blood vessels, super greens, essential source. So we have protocols laid out for you and, and I can't guarantee anything, but this is what I recommend. Sugar is really so bad for high blood pressure, even worse than salt. And I've covered this many times in talks. So you want to get the processed salt and processed sugar out of your diet. If you're going to do salt, I recommend air-dried sea salt only. Nothing else but air-dried sea salt if you're going to use it. Once again, eating more what? Fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Because they're loaded with things like lutein and zeaxanthine, and those are good for your uh, vision. Dr. Joe's omega-3 fatty acids. Again, I talked about that. I take those every day. Very good for inflammation. Can help your eyes as well. Super Green's an essential source. That's the, the starter kit for all supplements. Can't imagine why everybody in the world isn't taking at least a scoop of Super Green's an essential source every day. Very inexpensive, amazingly effective in most cases, loaded with nutrients, tastes great. There's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it. And you can get those on our website, drjoe.com. And those omega-3s are really important too for inflammation because you can't produce them yourself. You have to get them from outside sources. So you want to, uh, if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, many times it's the stomach pushed up against the diaphragm and my doctors are trained by me to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, many times physically fixing your digestive problems. So if you have those issues, drjoe.com, make an appointment to come see us. You want to avoid osteoporosis and simple way to do that is stay away from the bad foods, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener eating more fruits and vegetables, and you got to take vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is an essential nutrient. You only get it if you're interacting with sunlight. And unfortunately, in the winter, you can't get enough sunlight, no matter how much you get. And many of us are living inside life now. We'll go from our house to our garage, to our car, to our office. We don't, we're not out in the sun for 20, 30 minutes a day like we should be. So vitamin D3, also want to make sure your D3 has vitamin K2 with it. D3 helps you absorb the calcium. K2 drives it into the bones. If you're just taking D3 without K2, it's a problem. Now, if you're eating a high plant-based diet, chances are you're getting enough K2. But I add it right into Dr. Joe's D3 with K2 just to make sure you get enough of it. And it's on the website, drjoe.com. I take five drops a day. That's all I do, five drops a day. And that's all you need. Now, if you are sick, you can take a five, 50 drops a day for about three days, then go back to five drops a day. That's 5,000 international units a day. I don't know what an international unit is. That's just how they measure omega-3s. We talked about blood pressure being so important. And again, if you have any questions about any of your health issues, go to our website, drjoe.com, and just type in what you're looking for. Chances are we've done a show or an article or a podcast or something on that topic. And if you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. Joe, my assistant, and I are more than happy to help you in any way we can. The supplements are all available on the website, or come by and pick them up. If you come by our offices, check our hours. Or each, each office has different hours. Uh, it'll save you some shipping costs, but we're happy to ship them to you. It's very inexpensive, the shipping. We're happy to get them out to you right away. And we ship all over the world. And most importantly, make an appointment to come see us, drjoe.com. Follow us on social media at Dr. Joe Esposito. And if you're a podcast junkie, type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And you can listen to our podcast. And on our website, drjoe.com, over 2,000 hours of podcasts. 